Good evening to all of you. I'm going to make a statement in English. Copies will be distributed at the end of the media conference. I'll take just a few questions only on one subject, the current subject. This is not a general press conference. This is not a general press conference. I wish to make a brief statement on the controversy surrounding Mr. Lalit Modi that has been highlighted in the media during the last few days. In or about 2010, the Enforcement Directorate was investigating certain matters. Just a moment, please. Sorry. In or about 2010, the Enforcement Directorate was investigating certain matters concerning Mr. Lalit Modi. At the request of the ED, Mr. Lalit Modi's passport was cancelled in or about 2011. I returned as Minister of Finance on 1-8-2012. During a routine briefing, I was briefed about the cases being investigated by the ED including the case concerning Mr. Lalit Modi. ED reported that Mr. Lalit Modi had left India and was at that time in the United Kingdom without a valid passport. ED had issued showcase notices and summons to appear to Mr. Lalit Modi, but he had not appeared in person. ED therefore requested that I may take up the matter with my counterpart the Chancellor of the Exchequer, Mr. George Osborne. After due consultations within the government, it was decided that I may take up the matter with the UK Chancellor. Mr. Osborne and I discussed the matter at a bilateral meeting. I wrote a letter to Mr. Osborne, to which Mr. Osborne replied. In response, I wrote another letter to Mr. Osborne. You will kindly appreciate that I am recalling the events from memory. The letters exchanged between Mr. Osborne and me are the best evidence. Both the context and the contents will be known if the letters are made public. The gist of the letters was, and I speak from memory, that Mr. Lalit Modi was being investigated under the laws of India that his passport had been cancelled and he had no right to travel outside India or to remain in the UK and that the UK government may take steps to send him back to India. I understand that Mr. Lalit Modi has made some charges against the UPA government. The charges are laughable and do not deserve a reply. The complete answer to the charges can be found in the letters exchanged between Mr. Osborne and me. In a way, Mr. Arun Jaitley, the Finance Minister, has repelled the charges by confirming that the ED was indeed investigating 16 cases against Mr. Lalit Modi and had issued showcast notices to him in 15 of those 16 cases. However, the matter does not end there. The conduct of Ms. Sushma Swaraj, the External Affairs Minister, in facilitating the issue of a travel document to Mr. Lalit Modi, when his passport stood cancelled and he was avoiding an inquiry by the ED, also raises a number of important questions. Since the matter involves the credibility and reputation of a Minister of the Government of India, I shall be very careful in the choice of words in framing my questions. One. Why is the government, despite repeated demands, not releasing the letters exchanged between the Finance Minister of India and the Chancellor of Exchequer UK? Two, 
if the external affairs minister was inclined to facilitate Mr. Lalit Modi's travel to Portugal on humanitarian grounds, why did she not advise Mr. Lalit Modi to apply to the Indian High Commission in London for a temporary travel document to enable him to visit Portugal alone for a limited period? Why did she feel that Mr. Lalit Modi, an Indian citizen, should have a UK travel document rather than an Indian travel document? Three, why did the External Affairs Minister not insist that Mr. Lalit Modi should first return to India as a condition for issue of a temporary travel document on humanitarian grounds? Four, when the division bench of the High Court set aside the cancellation of Mr. Lalit Modi's passport, who took the decision not to file an appeal to the Supreme Court? Was the ED, at whose instance the passport had been cancelled, consulted in the matter? Furthermore, who took the decision to issue a fresh passport to Mr. Lalit Modi? Will the government make public the filed notings on the subject? 5. A passport is a document of travel. To stay in a foreign country, one requires a visa or a permit from that country. Has the government of India lodged with the UK government its objections to the grant of a long-term visa or residency permit to, the, to Mr. Lalit Modi who has refused to appear before the ED. 6. Mr. Lalit Modi now has an Indian passport. He is an Indian citizen subject to Indian laws. What steps has the government taken since the issue of a fresh passport to enforce the summons issued by the ED? And 7. What is government's answer to Mr. Lalit Modi's wild charge that his life will be in danger if he returned to India. Is the NDA government incapable of protecting an Indian citizen who is required by the ED to appear for an inquiry? I suggest that the government answer these seven questions before we can take the debate further. I am prepared to take a few questions from you. Sir, you were talking about uh, the correspondence between you and George Osman. What was the nature of queries that you had sent uh, I've regarding said it. the issues? I have said it. I have said I am speaking from memory, but the gist of the correspondence is that Mr. Lalit Modi was being investigated under the laws of India, that his passport has been cancelled, he had no right to travel outside India or to remain in the United Kingdom, and that the UK government must take steps to send him back to India. That is the gist of the correspondence. The actual letter must be made public. Sir, you said you got a reply from Mr. Osborne. Yes. What was the nature of the reply? Was it positive about sending things to send No, Mr. Osborne was not positive. In fact, he was quite negative. Which is why I wrote the second letter, which I believe, I am again talking from memory, was couched in stronger language than the first letter. Uh, any, any reasons he gave for not... Well, he did, but... The best thing is to release the letters. The letters will speak for themselves. Why is the government fighting shy of releasing the letters? Sir, do you think that the, sir, do you think? As I said, this charge is a laughable charge. If the UPA was hounding him, why does Mr. Arun Jaitley confirm? that in 15 out of 16 cases, Shokar's notices have been issued to him. Is the NDA also hounding him? Did the UK government, did the UK government at any time, was Dalit Modi not just depending upon the UK, something about the world or not, that even if we have the allegation that he's complaining about the Dalit Modi and the UK, he was just pointing out some other people. Well, I can't answer for either Mr. Rupert Murdoch or other names that you mentioned. No, did the UK government not in my letter 
The question of giving him a travel document did not arise at that time. The only question was, how is he staying in the UK where his passport had been cancelled and why is he not being sent back to India? So why do you think that uh, the, U the NDA government uh, hadn't gone for an appeal against uh, the travel document of Lalit? Well, that's a million dollar question. That's why I'm asking the question, who took the decision? Who took the decision not to file an appeal? See, the government, when a judgment comes against the government, someone has to take a decision, we will appeal or we will not appeal. It cannot go by default. Someone took the decision. I would like to know who took the decision. Obviously, the decision was taken in the MEA, Ministry of External Affairs. So I think the government owes an explanation who took that decision. So do you think, so do you think such a decision was taken to protect well, the judgment was a reversing judgment. Let me explain. The single judge upheld the cancellation of the passport. The division bench reversed that judgment. And normally, when a division bench reverses a single judge, normally an appeal is filed to the Supreme Court. So if an appeal is not filed for 10 months, one has to point a finger of suspicion to whoever took that decision. Sir, sir, that is a new charge being uh, levied on Congress. That, uh, Congress is basically anti-improvement and that is what you want to being targeted. Complete targeted. rubbish. I mean, don't, don't, uh, don't even repeat such charges and dignify them. You are a, a very highly qualified young modern man. Please don't repeat these absurd charges. My party has already demanded that. So do you think that charge can this be taken as the first charge of nepotism? It's clearly a charge of nepotism, abuse of authority, violation of rules. I don't know what is beyond that, but it seems to be building from one to another. So do you think so what? That is a matter for the ED. UPA doesn't issue the notice. The ED issues the notice. So you probably will issue the blue collar notice and then a red collar notice. Those are questions that the ED must answer. But at that time, there was a lookout notice, there was a show cause notice, there was a summons to appear, and Mr. Lalit Modi did not appear. How serious are the charges? How serious are the charges? They're pretty serious. There are two acts involved. One is the Foreign Exchange Management Act, and the other is the Prevention of Money Laundering Act. Under FEMA, the offences attract civil penalty. Under PMLA, the offences are criminal offences. So the charges are serious and someone who is facing those charges must appear in an inquiry. He has always stayed only in the UK. I don't think so. I, I think they believe that the matter is buried and nobody will raise, uh, rake it up. I think they believe that the matter is buried and nobody will rake it up. So what do you make of this? What do you make of this? No, no, I don't know anything about it. What do you make of the silence of the Prime Minister? It was during the UPA reche, the biggest accusation with BJP flow on Mr. Manmohan Singh was that he kept silent, uh, silent on all corruption issues. What do you make of the current silence of Mr. Prime Minister who is not willing to talk about this issue at all? Well, I reject the charge that Dr. Manmohan Singh was silent when issues broke out. He has made statements, he has commented, be that as it may. Mr. Jaitley said yesterday, so the government takes collective responsibility for the actions of any minister. So I assume that Mr. Modi takes responsibility for Ms. Sushma Swaraj's actions.
Sir, Mr. Lalit Modi says that his lawyers have been appearing before the ED. Is that enough, sir, or uh... obviously not? The summons is to appear in person. At some stage, you must appear in person. These are purely technical matters. The point is, there was a lookout notice, there was a show cause notice, more than one, and there was a summons to appear, and the passport was cancelled. How does this gentleman remain in the UK? No, when he left India, obviously he had a passport. The passport was cancelled only afterwards. No, I don't know about the facts of that case. No, generally, generally, facts that have been disclosed so far point to nepotism, that is, doing a favor to someone who's close to you, abuse of authority, and violation of rules. That's what I said. Huh? I don't have to comment. I don't know what statement is. And why should I comment on another statement? Uh, Lalit Modi has said that uh, the UPA went after him only because he had uh, uh, such a trouble. Uh, As I said, that charge is a laughable charge. Why don't you look at the contents of the letters? The context and the contents will be apparent once those letters are released. The letters speak for themselves. The letters were not written yesterday. They were written at a time when this controversy didn't break out. So the letters are the best evidence. So, so why did the UPA government... Don't, don't speak out of them, please. What's surprising about it? In fact, it is the RSS which supported first and then the BJP followed suit. It shows who's the master. Yes. So why did the UPA allow him to leave the country despite uh, an ED notice? Despite Please understand, he had a passport at that time. There was no ban on travel. So a person with a passport can leave the country. Why do we assume that he will not return to India? At that stage, it is only an inquiry. The lookout notice is for... Uh, no, no, that is much later. That is later. Please go to the sequence. When he left India, there was no lookout notice. I cannot comment on those matters because those are matters where I have to examine the paper, study the facts. These are all being revealed in the media. I can't comment on that offhand. But clearly, more and more revelations are coming with every passing hour. So do you think that Sitma Swaraj has uh, pleased uh, propriety? No, no, you are asking me to make judgment calls. My party has already taken its stand and made it clear that is my party stand. I'm not going to speculate. All I'm saying is if, if, big if, the external affairs minister wanted to help him on humanitarian grounds. She should have told him, apply to the Indian High Commission. You are an Indian citizen. We will give you a travel document for one week or two weeks. Go to Portugal and come back. Why did the Indian minister feel that an Indian citizen should get a UK travel document rather than an Indian travel document? I don't know. I don't know. Sir, but what, but what is this light blue color notice, sir? Can you Nothing. Explain? It's just a notice, a lookout notice saying if you identify him, if you find him, you have to report to the enforcement director so that the enforcement director can take further action. No, no, I didn't say that. Don't put Ask words in my mouth. If, if, big if, the humanitarian ground is a genuine ground. An Indian minister should tell an Indian citizen 
apply to the Indian High Commission? Why does she tell a British MP, get him a UK travel document? No. Is he also a UK resident? He had won the right to be a UK resident? No, no. At yeah. that time, he had won no right. You got your facts wrong. He had won no right at all. He was an Indian citizen without a valid passport. No, no. You, to stay in the UK. To stay no. in the UK, he had got the rights. No. Not on that day. No. No, no, I'm not going to comment on all that. This media conference is only about the current issue. I don't remember a reply to the second letter, uh, but the best is for the government to release all the letters. But I don't think there was a reply to the second letter. Undoubtedly, Government must use its authority and power to ensure that Mr. Dalit Modi returns to India and faces the inquiry by the Enforcement Directorate. Sir, so, Mr. Director, the Director told that the Congress Party leaders also took the back with the four So, you can take photographs with me. So, what? What is the issue there?